Sachez Baba Kamadaf Ayin Gimo is two sugyas in the halachos of Eidim Zoyimimin related to a machlekes which we had earlier. So we're going to try to bring proofs to a machlekes of Ayin Rabba which we just had as to whether when an Eid Zoyimim becomes puzzle, does it become puzzle from the time that he became Zoyimim or from the time that he testified the Eidos which later became Zoyimim? And then the second sugi will be if an aid is first contradicted and then it becomes huzam, at what point does the psal begin? So let's begin. We've already seen a machlek is and rava. We've already passed in the machlek is actually like a bayah, but the gemara is still going to bring rayas to it. What happens when an aid says eidos, let's say, on Monday and it becomes zaymim on Tuesday? Is a puzzle aid from Tuesday when he became zaymim or is a puzzle aid lim mafreya from the time he said the false aidus, which was on Monday? So a said it's the mafreya. And we pass kind of like that. But the Gemara is bringing rise to it. So the Gemara brings a rise from our most recent Mishnah. The Mishnah over there said, if a pair of Edom come and they testify that Yangal stole an ox and they testify that he slaughtered it, then these Edom were found to be Zayim, and so they have to pay the entire amount, the entire Dalad Vehe that they wanted to be Mechaev, the person that they testified falsely against. Now the Gemara's question is, you have four incidents here. The testimony of the stealing, the testimony of the slaughter, the Hazama of the stealing, and the Hazama of the slaughter. Pashtus, it takes place in that order. You have one, two, three, and four. First, testimony on the stealing, then testimony on the slaughter, then number three is hazama on the stealing, and, is, and number four is hazama on the slaughter, all those four things. Now, if you say like a baye, that the psul edis comes the mafreya, so that means when number three happened, when they testified that when the edim came and made hazama on the testimony of the slaughter, that means that lima freya, from step one, they were already psul edis. That means that when they said edis two, to the slaughter, the Mafreya turns out that they were Psulim at the time. If that's true, that's a Puzzle Aedis. If the Puzzle Aedis doesn't matter that they became Zemimim later, the Aedis is Puzzle even if you didn't, you weren't Mazim that in step four. And therefore, since step two is Puzzle, they shouldn't have to pay the extra for the Dalad Vehe since that was a Puzzle Aedis before it became Zemimim. So the Gemara answer is no, that's not the case. The case is that step three was that they testified, was that we had Aedim to make Hazama on the slaughter. That came first. And then only step four was we had Aedim to be Mazim on the, on the theft in the first place. And therefore, you, you don't have that there was a psal already at the time that you had Zemimim, at the time that you had Aedim come and make that they were Zemimim on the slaughter. The Gemara says it's, it still shouldn't make a difference, because in step four, when you have Adam come and say that the testimony about the theft was Hazama, and their Mazam that, and they Lima Freya from the time, from step one, from the time that there was testimony about the, the theft, and he's already puzzled. So it still comes out that Lima Freya, when they said step two, the testimony on the Shrita, they were already psulim. So you shouldn't have to pay. They shouldn't have to pay as a Zemimim for that. So it's still a cash on a bayi. So the Gemara answer is no. What happened was actually was that it was one Maisa Edus. That they said one Edus on the stealing and the Shechita all in one shot. And therefore it was the Hazama worked for all of them. It was Kasha Edus until the Hazama on all of them. It was never a separate Edus. Okay, now the Gemara brings a Brisa, which has very similar halachas, but here we have a little machlekes. And the Gemara wants to say that this machlekes is actually the machlekes of Bayi and Reva. So the Brisa says as follows. If there were, if there were two witnesses that testify that someone stole, and the same two witnesses testify that he slaughtered. So, in the first case, they became Zaymimin on the theft. So says the Gemara, then since you were mavatal their edus on the theft, it's mavatal the complete edus, and you don't believe anything that happened. Now, what happens if they became Zaymimin on the slaughter? So the Tanakama says, since they were Zaymimin on the slaughter, we still have true edus on the theft, and therefore the thief has to pay kefel. The Zaymimim have to pay the three times extra, the, the what you fill in from the kefel until the four and the five. Now, on this review, he says that that's only true if it was two testimonies, but if it was one testimony, then edus bad muktasa bad lakula. Now, that's a cryptic statement. And Mar's going to try to figure out what is he arguing on. He says it's true by two, but it's not true by one. What is the one edus that he's saying, edus bad muktasa bad lakula? What is the case of one edus? So, there's some case you have to figure out what it is. It's one edus, where mazim, the slaughter part of it, and Tanakama says you would have to, he, you would believe the shechita, you would believe the theft, and he still has to pay kefal for that. The Zemimim have to pay the three. And Rabbi Yassi would say, no, Eidos, but, uh, what is that case of one Eidos? So the 
Gemara wants to break it down as follows. We have three levels of how unified this Aedes could be. Level 1, 2, and 3. So the most unified would be, level 1, would be that it was one pair of Aedes saying both things at the same time. Geneva and Shrita at the same time. Next level below that would be that it's one pair of Edim, but they're saying two different things. First they came and they say Geneva, then later they come and they say Shrita. And then level three would be that it's two separate pairs of Edim. One said one and one said the other. So the Gemara says, so again, so what's two Edis and what's one Edis? So says the Gemara, let's start at the bottom. Let's say two Edis is if it's two separate pairs of Edim. There everyone agrees that it's not Batam Tzas because it's not one Edis. And one Edis would be that if it's two Edim B'Zeh So the Gemara says, then why would a VAC say that Batam Tzas HaBatlakula? It's two separate testimonies. Why should one cancel the other? So the Gemara says, therefore, it has to be that it's not level two and three when we say one Edis and two Edis. It's level one and level two. So therefore, level two is... When there was one pair of Adam that came two different times and said two different testimonies there, everyone agrees there's no bottle of or bottle of Kula because it's two different ideas. What's the case of the, what's the, case of the Machlech? It has to be one pair of Adam, the same time, they say Geneva and they say Shechita, and therefore the Tanakh, and the Tanakh Kama says if you're Mazim, the Shechita, you still have the testimony of the Geneva, and the Gnesi says no bottle of Kula, bottle of Kula. So says the Gemara, okay, if that's the case, so what's, what is the Machlech is over? So the Gemara wants to say as follows. It must be everyone agrees therefore it's one edus. But they argue over Abaye and Rava. They argue over when they became Mazim later, is that Chal the Hazama, the Chal the from the time of the testimony, or is it from the time of, of the Hazama? The Rabbanon holds from the time of the Hazama. And therefore, you're not going to cancel both edus because the Psal starts much later, well after the edus. If the edus was on Monday and the Psal on the Shrit that came on Tuesday, so you have no reason to puzzle something, the rest of the Edis that happened on Monday. The Psal only starts from Tuesday. Rabbi Yossi says, no, it goes to Mafreya, and therefore the Psal starts from the moment that they said it. In that Edis, part of it is now Batal, the Shrita part of it is Batal because it's Hazama, and Batal Musasa, Batal Kula. And therefore the Mechlekes is Gufa over Abai and Rava. Do you say that the Psal is from the time of the Hazama, or it's from the time of the actual Edis? So the man says, no, it's not the Mechlekes. Mechlekes is, do we say... Is it all considered to be one Edus or not? Everyone agrees, like Abaya, that it goes back to the time of the Edus. However, according to the Rabbanon, it's not to, we don't say I mean, if it's two separate statements, you could mazim one and not the other. It's all one statement. If you're mazim part of it, you mazim the whole thing. And Marno asks, you're telling me, it's not true. I'll show you that it doesn't hold that way. Where do you see that? Someone brings a mission of somebody who's trying to make tamura. He has a he has a, two carbonus in front of him, and he's trying to take a regular animal and swap it for one of those carbonus animals. And he says two things. He says harizu tamuras oila tamuras shlamim. In one uh, shot, he says this is instead of the oila, this is instead of the shlamim. The question is, what is it? What what's hal here? So Rabbi Meir says twice less region. It's an oila. You follow the first thing. It's an oila. Rabbi Yaisi says it depends what he meant. If he meant to do both of them. It's impossible to say two things at once, but he wanted it to be both. So then it's taka both, and therefore it has half kedushas oil and half kedushas shlamim, and you'll have to sell it and bring the money as half oil and half shlamim. Actually, you can't sell it. You'll have to leave it until it gets a mum, and then you have to sell it and bring it as half and bring half the money as oil money and half of it as shlamim. Now. If, however, he changed his mind, he didn't mean to make it both of them. He meant to do one and then change to the other. So he said Eila, and then he changed to Shlomim. So then it's Eila, because he can't change. Once it became an Eila, it's an Eila. So Gemara says, if he really changed his mind, so obviously he can't change. What's a Chiddush? So Gemara says, where Papa said, the Chiddush is that it was Techidei Dibur. And you, I, you may think Techidei Dibur could Dibur Dami, and therefore it's one thing, and he should be able to switch. We follow the entire, it's all one Long dibur k'mashman. It's not techli dibur k'dibur, and therefore the first thing is chal, the second thing is not. So you see, your base he holds techli dibur is lav k'dibur dam. So my answer is there's two types of techli dibur. It depends how long it is. Is it the time it takes for a talmud to ask shalom from his rebbe? That's longer because he has to say shalom malacha rebbe umayri. Or is it time that a rebbe says shalom to his talmud because then he just says shalom malacha? That's shorter. So Rabbi Yaisi holds of techli dibur of the rebbe to the talmud, which is shorter, only shalom malacha. However, the longer Teich Kedibur, Rabbi Shalom Alecha, Rabbi that he does not hold is Kedibur Dami. This concludes the Gemara's first sugya. Now we get to the Gemara's second sugya of Eidos Shachukhu Ubeshev Chuzmu. That means you have a pair of Edim. They say 
testimony. Then another pair comes and contradicts them. And then afterwards, they become actual zaymimin. So the question is, do you view this as Apostle Aedis from the time of the Hakasha and not Zaymim, and if they don't get Kasher Zamam. So if, for example, they're trying to give somebody a uh, Chiv Misa, they themselves wouldn't get a Chiv Misa because they have Hakasha. Or do you say, no, it's all Hazama. The contradiction is part of the Hazama process. So first, the Hakasha is included in the Hazama, it's all one long Hazama, and therefore if they were trying to kill somebody, they would get killed themselves. So Rabba says it is long hakasha. It's all one long hazama. Hakasha is part of the hazama. He, he says hakasha tchilas hazama. And if Adim first become hukash, first become contradicted, and then they became zaymimin, they would get misa themselves if they were trying to cause misa to someone else. So says Rabba, what's my raya? So Rabba brings a brisa where it says that we the witnesses come and they testify about a certain individual that he blinded the eye of his Eved, and that he knocked out the tooth of the Eved, and the Brisa says the master himself wants that. He agrees to that. So we're going to have to explain this as well. But that's what they said first. They said first, they said that he blinded the Eved's eye, then they said he knocked out his tooth, and the master agrees, and the halacha is that if they, if they come out to be Edom Zaymim, they have to pay for the value of the eye, to the Eved. So now we have to analyze this because there's a lot of things here that are odd. So it says the Gemara, what's happening over here? If you want to say, like we learned it, that there's no other Aedus here, and they come and they say, they testify, knocked out the eye, knocked out the tooth. By the way, the halacha then would be that he goes free from the moment that they have testimony that his, that, that his eye was knocked out. Um, and then once he's free, then the fact that they knocked out his tooth means that the master would have to pay for the tooth as well. He, has, he does not pay for the eye because that's what set the Ebed free, but he pays for the tooth because he was a free man at the time that he lost the tooth. So the Gemara says, so if it's, as we explained it, as it seems to be on the surface, then there's a lot of things here we don't understand. First of all, why did they pay the value of the eye to the Ebed? They testified that he knocked out the Evid's eye. It turns out that they were Zaymimin. Why, why does that mean? They weren't trying to make the Evid lose the value of his eye. Why do they have to pay that? Second question is, is they should have to pay to the master the full value of the Evid because they wanted to make the master lose his Evid. They testified that he knocked out his eye. He lost the evidence. Really, it's not true. Third thing is, what does it mean when it says that the master wanted that? How did the master want that Aedus? That's not an Aedus that he would want at all, testifying that he lost his Evid. Why should that be? So says the Gemara, the case must be as follows. Two witnesses came and said, first he knocked out his tooth, and then he knocked out his eye. And then he would have to pay, the master would have to pay for the eye, because they got free by the tooth, he has to pay for the eye. Then these two witnesses came and said, no, the eye was knocked out first, and then the tooth. And that way he doesn't have to pay for the eye, he only has to pay for the tooth, which is much less, obviously. Now, the first pair of witnesses is contradicting the middle pair. So the, the first and the second are contradicting each other. Now we understand why the master wanted the testimony of the second one, because he has to pay much less. Now, what happened afterwards? Those second pair of Edim became Zaymimim. So they were contradicted by the first pair. Then they became Zaymimim by the second. Then they themselves became Zaymimim. Now, they have to pay for the value of the eye to the Evid. Why? Because he wanted to make the Evid lose the value of his eye, because he was, he was only going to have to get paid for the, the tooth, not for the eye. So you see that you see that the contradiction is the beginning of the Hazama. You don't say that since they were contradicted, the Hazama is not anything at all. So by answers, no, that, that's not really the uh, case at all. There was no first set of Adas. The third Adam came over Mazim was the first and the third together. They came and they said, you don't know what you're talking about. There was You weren't there at the time, so you're lying, and that's Hazama. And then he said, but we're testifying that the Evid really does go free, and that's because first he knocked out his tooth, and then he knocked out his eye. And therefore, they themselves are establishing the truth, and what the first Adam lied to was to take away the vet, was was to make the Evid lose the value of his eye. And therefore, um, that is why that payment is what happens. But there was no initial contradiction, because if there was, then there wouldn't be Zaymimin. Now, says Abaye, I can prove that this is what's happening, that the second pair of Adim is switching the order at the same time that it's being Mazim. 
because that's what's happening in the next part of the b'risa. If you look in the seifa of the b'risa, it says that if the case was as follows, the witnesses, the original witnesses that become Edim Zemim, they say, we testify that he knocked out the tooth and then knocked out the eye, and the Eved wants that. That's something that the Eved wants to have. And the reasoning there would be because the Eved prefers to be a free man by the time his eye is knocked out, so he gets paid for the eye. But then this period of witnesses is found to be Zemimim. So the Edim Zemimim have to pay to the master the value of the eye. They want to be Mechaivim the eye. So says Abaye, what's happening? What did they say? If they just denied everything and said nothing happened, then they... Not only do the Edim Zemim have to pay for the eye, the Edim Zemim have to pay for the entire Evid because they tried to deprive the master of his entire Evid by making him go free. So it must be what happened is they switched the order. They said, no, first the eye got knocked out and then the tooth, and therefore you only have to pay for the tooth. So you see there, it's switched order. So here, it also must be that the Edim, that the Mazimim are agreeing that it happened. They're just switching the order. Now, the Gemara points out that both in the Reisha and the Seifa, you have to say that the second pair of Edim, which is testifying that the first pair was Mazimim, but the injuries actually happened just in a different order, must be agreeing that the injuries happened before the false testimony of the Edim Zaymim. Because otherwise, at the time that the Edim Zaymim spoke, there was no Chiv on the Master to free the Eved, and therefore they are still depriving the Master of his Eved, and they, and they should have to pay for the entire Eved. So it has to be that they're agreeing that the truth is that he had already lost his Eved at that point. Not only that, it has to be that they actually already went to court, and the Psak was given that he has to free the Eved, because otherwise they could have always admitted, that is, the owner could have always admitted that they owe it, and then they will be mpata from the whole thing anyway. So it's got to be that it all took place, and the second set of Edim, the Mazimim, are agreeing that it all took place before the testimony, the false testimony of the Zemim ever happened. Rashi takes a step further, and he says they actually have to be saying that they went to court with a different pair of Edim, and the Psak was given. Otherwise, it could have still been Maida, and Maida Bekanas Pater, and they would have gotten out of it.